Hello math learners! Our lesson for today is about the measures of central tendency, uh, emphasizing on the mathematical and process models. This is for ITEC 203 quantitative methods with modeling and simulation. Let's start with a definition. A measure of central tendency is a single value that attempts to describe a set of data by identifying the central position within that set of data. So, ang tinatawag daw natin na measure of central tendency ay yung pinakagitna ng data set natin. This is um, a visual representation of a data set. Nakahistogram na siya, similar to a bar graph. At pag hinanap daw natin yung central tendency, hinahanap natin yung pinakagitna. So, it is distributed. It, this one is tabingi. Skewed ang tawag dyan. So, ang pinakagitna niyan ay nandito sa part na to. Okay. So, hinahanap natin ay isang value lang. A single value that attempts to describe a set of data. So, yung description natin, sabi natin, on the average, ay ito yung, ito yung pinakagitna. So, yun yung usually na ginagawa natin pag gumagawa tayo ng report. Uh, yung pinakasentro nung set of data natin kung may it be 50 or hundreds or thousands, yung measure of central tendency ang magsasabi sa atin kung alin dun yung pinaka-gitna. Now, there are three kinds of measures of central tendency. We have the mean the median, and the mode. And I'm sure that you are already familiar with this tree. Ngayon, ang emphasis natin dito ay yung process, yung model mismo, mathematical model at saka yung process. So, ito yung formula para sa mean. This is mu, Greek alphabet mu, that represents the population mean. Itong x bar na to, represents the sample mean. So, most of the time, pag gumagawa tayo ng thesis, ito yung formula na ginagamit natin. So, the sigma notation here, ito, uh, indicates repeated addition. So, ano yung i-add daw natin? Yung elements ng data set natin, i from 1 to n, wherein n is the number of items in the sample, i-add daw natin lahat yon at i-divide natin sa n. So, that is the mathematical model. mag a -add tayo na mag and then i-divide natin yung total or yung sum noon dun sa number of items. So, as an example, we are asked to solve for the mean of the data set 10, 12, 25, 9, 11, 16, and 10. Ang una muna proseso na ginagawa dyan, uh, if you are going to create a program about this is automatically the system would count the number of elements in the set at bibilangin niya 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 therefore, ilalagay niya yon sa kanyang memory that n is equal to 7 and then it computes for the mean at ang ginagawa niya ay ina-add niya lahat yung elements so 10 plus 12 plus 25 plus 9 plus 11 plus 16 and plus 10 ulit and yung lahat na to, na plus na yan, yun yung kanina na sigma notation. Repeated addition. Kung ano man yung maging total nyan, which is 93, i-divide nyo yan ng 7. Kasi yun yung n natin, ba? And the answer is going to be 13.28571. And that is the mean of the data set. So, isang number lang. It represents the middle. The second measure of central tendency is the median. Here, uh, merong dalawa tayong proseso. Uh, dalawang model, actually. Sabi niya, when the system automatically counts n, at nakita niya that n is odd, odd numbers, yun yung syempre, hindi na di-divide ng to like 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, etc. Those are odd numbers. So, ito daw yung gagawin niya. The median would compute for the n plus 1 over 2 na term. Hindi niya actually kinocompute yung 
mismong value ng median, kundi kinocompute niya kung saan niya hahanapin yung median. So, that's what it does. It, it finds the location of the median. And this is the formula. To find the location of the median, you have to, if n is add daw, an example kung 7 siya, 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Hanapin niya yung ika-fourth term at kung ano man yun, or fourth element, kung ano man yun, yun yung value ng median. But when n is even, kunyari yung given sa'yo ay 10, 10 data, oh, so, 10 yung elements ng data set mo, and 10 is even, eto daw yung gagawin niya. Hahanapin niya yung dalawang value so, yung 10 divided by 2 is 5th. So, yung 5th at saka yung 6th term, take note, magkasunod yan, ba? Yun yung pipick up in niya, i-add niya, at i-divide ng 2. That is going to be the value of the median. So, this time, meron siyang computation. Pero kailangan, pick up in niya muna yung n over 2nd term at saka n over 2nd plus 1 terms. Okay, so let's uh, do an example para ma makita natin kung paano yung process. Okay, so if you are going to create a program, alam nyo yung algorithm or step-by-step -step process na ginagawa ng system. So, uh, for example, you are asked to find the median of the data set 10, 12, 25, 9, 11, 16, 10. Ang ginagawa ng system or ng mga app ay first, it must sort the data from smallest to largest or from largest to smallest. Now, either one is okay. Kahit alin dyan yung gusto mong sorting, okay, smallest to largest or largest to smallest, you pick if you are going to create a program for this. So, for example, it's already sorted like this. So, pinakamaliit hanggang sa pinakamalaki. Now, since our N, okay, is 7, bakit 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ano yung pipick up niya na median? Ang gagawin niya, following the model kanina, yun daw 7, dadagdagan niya ng 1, that would be 8, divided by 2. That is the number of term na pipick up in mo doon sa sorted data mo. So, since ang ika-fourth ay 1, 2, 3, 4 ay 11, Yun na yung median mo. So, bali ang kinocompute niya dito ay yung pang ilang term ba or pang ilang element ba siya doon sa naka-arranged na data set mo. So, yun yung ginagawa niya. Hindi niya mismo kinocompute yung value ng median. Pag nalaman na niya kung pang ilang term yun, saka lang niya pipick up in doon. Okay? Sa example to naman, uh, for example, we have this data set, dinagdagan lang natin ng isa pa, 27 in the end, okay, from the, from example 1, just to make uh, the illustration easier. So, ganun pa din, you can, you must sort the data from either smallest to largest or largest to smallest, so that's fine. And then, ito yung kaibahan niya dun sa add. So, pag daw, kapag ka daw even, Dalawa yung number na pipick up in mo. So, ang, yung una dun sa mathematical model natin, n over 2. So, 8 divided by 2, that would be fourth term. Okay? Fourth term. Tapos yung kasunod niya, which is the fifth term, yun yung pipick up in mo. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and 5, that would be the middle. Okay? Yan yung middle. So, you... Ito ngayon, meron ng computation. Unlike dun sa una na parang pinull out nyo lang yung 11. This one, dahil dalawa, you have to add them and divide it by 2. Okay? So, yung pinaka-average nun dalawa na to is 11.5 and that is the median. Isang value pa rin. Okay? Isang value pa rin siya. So, it's fine kung meron kang discrete na ganito na puro whole number at ang na-pick up mo or ang na-compute niya na median for an even set ng data is decimal. That's okay. Okay? Walang problema doon. Walang problema doon. So, that's 11.5. And it's correct. Pag naman daw uh, hinahanap natin yung mode, now, uh, wala naman ito masyadong computation, but 
naggagawa ng some kind of sorting at saka yung if then statement yung program mo. So sabi niya, find the data entry with most frequency yung daw pinakamadaming ulit. Sometimes there are only one mode for the data. There is only one mode for the data, but it is possible to have multiple modes. So, it is easier to find the mode if the data is sorted. So, yun yung unang-una na naman step kapag ka, uh, kumukuha ka ng mode. Gagawin mo sa program mo, isort ni program mo yung data either from smallest to largest or vice versa. Okay lang. And then, ayan. Tapos, ang gagawin niya, pipiliin niya kung alin yung may pinakamarami. So, for our example, na-double yung 10. So, dalawang entry yung 10. Kaya, yun yung pinili niya. Kasi lahat naman single entry, di ba? Iisa-isa lang. So, wala na siyang kayo ng pute. Sinabi niya, okay, dalawang beses. Ito yung may pinakamadaming uh, frequency. Dalawang beses siya nag-appear. Therefore, mode is 10. Ganyan. So, ang emphasis natin dito is how... Uh, the machine or the computer would do it. Kasi gagawa kayo ng program na makakapag-compute ng mean, median, and mode. So, for our next project, which is going to be presented in class, you need to create a calculator for the mean, median, and mode. Again, using the language C Sharp, because you're already familiar with it. So, uh, Pwedeng ganito yung itsura, but uh, if you are going to show me uh, yung naka-hard-coded, uh, very simple, it's good enough, okay lang yun, so walang problema doon. So, I hope that you were able to get the idea on how to make a program that uh, solves for the mean, median, and mode. So, thank you very much for watching and God bless.